Hello. Okay, hello, good morning, good morning. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Welcome to our participants online. How are you? How are you, how are you doing today? Welcome to our session two of our webinar series dubbed as Transitioning the Education Ecosystem to the New Normal Webinar Series 2020 of the CHED Regional Office 1. Uh, as a reminder, for a start, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, CHED Regional Office Number 1. And don't forget to like our Facebook page, CHED Region 1. For our feedback form later, uh, we'd like to remind you that please to be able to avail of your online certificates, you have to fill up the feedback form. The link will be shown to you later. Uh, and then we have also our deadline for our feedback form. You have to fill up the feedback form up to 12 noon tomorrow. Okay? So um, at the moment, we have several participants on YouTube and other participants also from... Uh, our Facebook account. Do we also have our Zoom right now? Oh, we do not have our uh, our Zoom right now. We only have our Facebook and uh, our YouTube channel. So with that, my dear friends, we're all ready. Again, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, CHED Regional Office 1, and like our Facebook page, CHED Region 1. To start with, may we now listen to the opening message of our officer in charge of the CHED Regional Office 1, Dr. Rogelio T. Galera, Jr. Thank you for joining us in the first set of our webinar series last Thursday. We have received such a positive response from all our more than 15,000 viewers all around the world. We hope that the topics of mental health discussed by our experts, Mr. Michael Jimenez and Dr. Demma Ma, for great help to all of you. Transitioning the education ecosystem to the new normal webinar series was designed to help and assist our educators and school administrators to cope with the challenges that confront the educational landscape with the abrupt and adverse effects of COVID-19. This has compellingly made us embrace the concept of the new normal. As change is inexorable, each is expected to confront the sprouting trends of the metamorphosing world. We have different coping strategies, various facing adaptability, and divergent ways of understanding the world around us. Yet, we all have one thing in common. 
beyond displacing events of constant alteration is a shared design and call to start anew. As it is innate in our race, psychological and physiological configuration as human beings, the yearning to give and share who we are and what we have to others, is a gift that was created in us by the Creator. However, the attempt to change the external world is a constant without allowing ourselves to be transformers. We cannot give what we do not possess. Lady Tolstoy, a rational writer, puts this this way. Everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing itself. Similarly, it was the American author and speaker, John C. Maxwell, who said, Most people want to change the world to improve their lives, but the world they need to change first is the one inside themselves. It is indeed important and equality that we start with ourselves before we can extend sharing ourselves to others. We therefore expect that our webinar series will truly quench the thirst for self-improvement for us to be able to continue giving who we are and what we can to our society. With this in mind, the new normal in education encourages us to pay attention to certain dimensions that we have almost neglected doing perhaps have taken for granted. Our current situation leads us to think, innovate, redefine our concept of service, and look at our goals as individuals. COVID-19 opened the gates for introspection. How do we perceive the world around us? How do we look at education as dynamic and desktop? Are our curricular offerings and the way we are delivered to our students reflect and satisfy the expectations of our stakeholders? Are our pedagogical activities responsive to the needs of the 21st century and resilient in nature? Do our graduates exhibit the competencies to value for the global workforce? Have we become complacent enough to think that we have total control fear and fear? of the future we are preparing our students and universities or colleges for. These questions are repeatedly lead us to reflect did our past decisions and actions contribute to the realization of our global mission as educational institutions? Our answers ought to lead us from reflection to transcendence, to look beyond our current situation and look for opportunities for educational relevance, viability, and inclusion. How? Through creative and critical thinking. Innovation along with the 21st century skills is the name of the game for educational institutions to remain visible during these difficult times. Flexible learning before was only for the very few institutions. We were used to have education confined in the walls of the classroom. We were used to receive hard copies of students' outputs. We were used to have meetings and seminars in conference rooms. Then suddenly, all went virtual. If the academy will not open its doors for innovative ideas and practices in educational delivery, educational institutions will surely be left behind and lose their students to institutions who are new normal and technologically prepared. 21st century needs responsive and fourth industrial revolution equipment. However, innovating for the sake of innovating is just a bandwagon journey. The purpose for innovation should not be solely to be in with fashion, but for relevance, social responsibility, and institutional viability. Beyond profits and monetary grades, an educational institution, primary responsibility to the society is to serve humanity. It is therefore expected from higher education institutions to help the community face crisis. Serving the community entails HCIs to create active partnerships, maintain relevant curricula, contribute to research which addresses different issues caused by critical situations, forge links with industry, contribute to finding solutions for nation building, and produce socially responsible members of the labor market. Instead of looking and staying in the gloomy shade, 
caused by this pandemic which affected us and our respective institutions. HCIs must look at the other side as another corner of our current situation presents opportunities for growth, improvement, and significance. HEIs are known and are made known not only by the crossing rate in board examinations and accreditation levels and status. They are more felt by the society through community extension activities in community service. We are educators. As education is a lifelong process, the many philosophies of education point to the same end goal of education, to make the learned person beneficial to the society. This will only take place if teachers and educators are open to continuous learning, creating learning experiences outside the box, and are lifelong learners themselves. As educators, we shape the future. The future has come. The future is now. Education as a concept is constantly evolving. Teachers must also undergo the same process. No technology can ever replace teachers unless teachers allow such wild imagination to happen. The extinction of teachers is not impossible. The obvious ingredients are complacency, mediocrity, narrow-mindedness, and refusal to adopt the changes. As we again gather virtually for the second set of our webinar series, let us journey together to our incoming world of the new normal in education, not only to have a glimpse, but to have a taste and touch of what it means to be educators under the new normal. Guided by our expert resource persons, let us allow ourselves to be filled with inspiration, encouragement, and hope. Maraming salamat po at magandang araw sa ating lahat. Okay, there you have it. Thank you, Dr. JR, for that very informative opening message. As you all know, this webinar series is an initiative of the CHED Regional Office, and we have lined up several sessions for you. We have several sessions. The first session was conducted last Tuesday, Thursday last week. That is on mental health. For today, we have session two, which is on spiritual health. Session three would be an overview on distance learning education. Session four would be uh, common online platforms. And then we have session five, which will be on special topics such as gender issues during um, this disease outbreak and another special topic on maintaining nutritional health during the ECQ period. So if we're ready, we now introduce our speaker for the day. Our speaker for the day is from Bagak, Bataan, but presently assigned as the Vice President for Finance of the Divine Word College of Vegan, Vegan City, Ilocosur. He completed his AB Philosophy, Minor in Social Science degree at Christ the King Mission Seminary and graduated cum laude. He finished ecclesiastical course in theology as magna cum laude at Divine Word School of Theology. He also finished his Master of Arts in Pastoral Ministry, again as magna cum laude at Divine Word School of Technology, uh, sorry, Divine Word School of Theology. And then he finished his baccalaureate in theology as cum laude at Urbania University in Rome. And for now, he is a PhD management candidate at St. Louis, Louis University Baguio City. He was ordained on March 30, 2004 by the then Bishop Luis Antonio Tagle, now a Cardinal Bishop. He was also one of the professors in the seminary, uh, Cardinal Bishop. Father Elmer is a relig religious missionary belonging to the Society of the D Divine Word 
SRSVD. He is our regular mass presider and a good friend of the CHED Regional Office. Friends, ladies, and gentlemen, let us all welcome Father Elmer B. Loreto. Hello, Father. Hello, po, Ma'am Angie. Okay, po okay lang po. <laughs> ready na po tayo? Uh, sana po, ready na. Nakalag <laughs> na tayo, Father. Opo. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. All systems go. We now listen to Father Elmer Loreto. Start na po, ma'am. Okay, good morning po sa inyong lahat, no? Uh, this is my first time to be in this situation, so please bear with me, no? So I would like to have this session, this talk, in a spirit of prayer. So we will begin with a prayer and then we'll end with a prayer. So start na po tayo, no? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. May God, who is the fountain of all goodness, be with you all, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, listen to the words of the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and God of all encouragement, who encourages us in every affliction so that we may be able to encourage those who are in any affliction with the encouragement with which we ourselves are encouraged by God. For as Christ's sufferings overflow to us, so through Christ does our encouragement also overflow. If we are afflicted, it is for your encouragement and salvation. If we are encouraged, it is for your encouragement, which enables you to endure the same sufferings that we suffer. Our hope for you is firm, for we know that as you share in the sufferings, you also share in the encouragement. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, let our response be, the Lord led his people out with rejoicing. The Lord led his people out with rejoicing. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name, make known among the nations his deed. Sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. The Lord... The Lord let his, Let his people, people out with rejoicing. rejoicing. Glory in his holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. The Lord led his people out with rejoicing. Recall the wondrous deeds that he has wrought, his portents, and the judgment he has uttered. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgment prevails. The Lord led his people out with rejoicing. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham and by his oath to Isaac. The Lord led his people out with rejoicing. The prayers of the faithful. God loves his creation and his goodness sustains the universe. Let us pray now that he will bestow his blessing upon us and that he will renew and support us with his strength. For Lord, every petition, we will pray and say, Lord, send us your blessing. Lord, send us your blessing. Everlasting God, you give life a nobler meaning when we try wholeheartedly to do your will. 
Fill us with the spirit of your own holiness. For this we pray. Lord, send us your blessing. You want us to increase your gifts and to return them to you and to our neighbor. Accept the offering of our loving service. For this we pray. Lord, send us your blessing. You watch over us with fatherly care. Hear the cries of those who trust in you. For this we pray. Lord, send us your blessing. You sent your Son into the world to remove the curse of sin and replace it with your blessing. In Christ, fill us with every heavenly blessing. For this we pray. Lord, send us your blessing. You have put forth into our hearts your Son's Spirit, in whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Hear your children as they acclaim and praise your goodness. For this we pray. Lord, send us your blessing. Through your Son's death and resurrection, you have chosen us to be your people and your inheritance. Remember us in our needs and bless your inheritance. For this we pray. Lord, send us your blessings. In the silence of our hearts now, we also include our personal intentions. Can we please pray silently for our own intentions? Lord, let the effect of your blessing remain with your faithful people to give them new and new life and strength of spirit so that the power of your love will enable them to accomplish what is right and good. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So gathering our prayers and praises into one, we now pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Comfort us, O Lord. Protect your church, which crosses the desert. Comfort us, O Lord. Comfort Protect us. You. Protect humanity, terrified by fear and anguish. Comfort us, O Lord. Protect the sick and the dying, oppressed by loneliness. Comfort us, O Lord. Protect doctors and healthcare providers exhausted by the difficulties they are facing. Comfort us, O Lord. Protect politicians and decision makers like us who bear the weight of having to make decisions. Comfort us, O Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, behold our sor sorrowful condition. Comfort your children and open our hearts to hope so that we might feel your fatherly presence in our midst. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So, so again, and once again, good morning uli po sa inyong lahat. So, Morning, so Papa. before, uh, good morning po, Ma'am Angie. So, ito na po yung magiging uh, proper ng aking talk, no? Uh, ma, sa lahat po ng mga nanunood, uh, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat, no? Hopefully, you are all safe, no? So, before proceeding to my topic, no? I would like first to introduce to you to why I came up with this kind of topic. No, meron po kasing structure yung aking ginawa. So ito po yung sa introduction, and dito po yung tinatawag ko na tung tungan, no, kung bakit ko po to nagawa, no. So yung mga nakapekto sa akin, bakit ganito yung naging structure ng aking 
naging talk, no? So first and foremost, no, even though I am a priest, this talk is generic, no? Uh, kung meron man pong Catholic slant dito, ay konti lang, pero ano po dito, no? Mas more on Christian or life in general. So kung makikita nyo po dyan sa screen, ano, nandyan po yung Latin phrase na men sana in corpore sano. No? A healthy mind in a healthy body. No? Yan po isa na kaya influence sa akin because mamaya malalapan nyo po kung bakit. Ano? So, so this influenced me during this COVID-19 quarantine. Ano? No? Uh, meron pong epekto sa akin ano? personally itong COVID na to. No? Kaya ito yung isang naalala ko, ano? yung men sana in corpore sano. Another na naka-inspire sa akin para maging tungtungan nitong talk na to is yung unang-una nung nag aaral pa ako sa seminaryo. Ang isa sa unang itinuro sa amin is in doing yung tinatawag na doing theology, no? Uh, yung about theology and spirituality, no? Nandoon yan. Ayun yung una po yung nakunasan si Mother Teresa. Ah, uh, ayan ano. Ang sabi kasi nung isang professor namin sa seminaryo ang teolohiya at ang espiritualidad ay ano ano mayroon daw tatlong position no unang-una sabi niya uh, theology dapat daw ang theology ay marunong umupo no ibig sabihin marunong mag-aral no pangalawa ang theology or even spirituality ay marunong lumuhod Ibig sabihin, magdasal. No? At yung pangatlo, ang spirituality or theology ay dapat marunong tumayo. No? Meaning you stand up. No? At yung pangapat, theology and spirituality dapat daw ay marunong maglakad. Ibig sabihin, marunong makisalamuha. No? Meaning theology in action. No? Meaning, our faith in action is love. No? Sabi nga ni Mother Teresa. And love in action is service. No? So by transforming that faith into living acts of love, we put ourselves in contact with God Himself and with Jesus our Lord. No? Iyan po yung isang naging tungtungan ko dito sa aking talk. Kaya nga po, I will not directly go to spirituality per se. Titignan muna natin dahil nga sabi nga dapat marunong mag-aral, no? marunong umupo. Titignan natin yung background bakit tayo meron ganito ngayon about COVID. No? And then another inspiration of mine, kung makikita nyo po, uh, these two, no? uh, kasama po to sa mga favorite books ko. Actually, two of my favorite books, no? eh, ito pong Little Prince at saka yung All I Really Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten. Very inspiring po sa akin to. Hindi po ako nawawalan ng kopya nito. No? Kaya actually bago ko sinimulan to is binasa ko li yung Little Prince. No? Ewan ko no, matindihan dating sa akin itong dalawang libro na to. Maybe because ano, nagiging mas grounded ako because of these two books. No? Kaya naging tungtungan ko rin po to para magawa itong aking talk na to, no. So, this will be the flow of our talk. No? Unang-una po, yung tungkol sa situation, no? tapos yung life implication, no? and then life lesson, tapos isishare ko rin po yung personal and spiritual lesson no? na na-experience ko ngayong COVID, no? And then some addendum based on a certain book. And then conclusion. After po nung conclusion, I, we will end up with a prayer. Dadasalin po natin ng sama-sama yung Oratio Imperata. Na? So, eto na po tayo. Na? So, okay. We will now begin our situation. No? So plague, pestilence, no? such terms not only imply a disease with deadly consequences, but a disease that is mysterious, 
unknown and without human control. But the world pandemic, uh, but the word pandemic, no? <laughs> that sounds worse in every way. In reality, the term describes not the disease itself, but how extensive and prevalent appearance of the disease is geographically. No? In our current situation of the spread of the coronavirus or the COVID-19, the World Health Organization has declared this disease to be a global pandemic. There is no location that provides immunity. The COVID-19 pandemic disrupted every area of our lives. No? We are greatly affected and no one is exempted. No? Wala pong exempted. Meron po bang exempted dito sa mga nakikinig? No. Any volunteer? No? Wala naman. No? So governments responding to the guidance of healthcare specialists are giving practical guidelines to citizens to help protect them from contracting this new disease and from passing it on to others. These interventions are serious and should find a ready compliance from all citizens. This is a deadly disease and we still do not have an effective antidote for it. Yeah, ang nakakatakot dito, mga kapatid, may nabasa ako na sabi, ang pinakamabilis daw na na-discover na vaccine ay ano, umabot ng four years. No? Four years. Ano yun? Vaccine daw saan yun? Doon sa mumps. No? So we pray na sana nga matupad yung sinasabi nilang 12 to 18 months. No? We can, however, take measures to enhance our ability to avoid it or to reduce the likeliness of passing it on to others. The challenge of today's pandemic is not only medical, it is also profoundly spiritual. However, let me share with you first some life implications that are not necessarily spiritual about this pandemic situation. No? So, yung muna po, ano, mag-umpisa muna tayo sa implication. No? After nga nitong implication is life lesson. No? So, ano na ba yung nakikita nating pwedeng implications nitong pandemic na to? No? Uh, I will give six. Marami pong implications to. No? Hindi po natin pwedeng ilimit lang to sa anim. Pero ito lang po yung uh, nakikita ko sa ngayon. Ano? Yung unang implication niya is first, Humanity's well-being and environmental's or nature's condition can no longer be separated. No? Human health and the health of our planet go together. No? This is the truth of it. Mayroon ang kanta si Joey Ayala. No? Ang lahat ng bagay ay magkaugnay. No? Magkaugnay ang lahat. Mother nature is striking back and humans are caught on their back feet. Indeed, the pandemic should above all be a wake-up call that our well-being is closely tied to the health of the planet. Despite scientists' warnings about the high risk of animal-borne infectious diseases, we continue to destroy natural habitats. The evidence of the destructive human impact on the natural environment from water to soil to the air and its negative impact on human health and well-being is overwhelming. Yet, we find it difficult to change course. Despite the many warning signs, humans have become a geophysical force as we continue to destroy, pollute, and poison on a massive scale the very foundation we depend on for survival and well-being. Every year, we dump over 30 billion tons of carbon into the atmosphere. We destroy entire animal and plant species at an alarming rate. We have cut down forests everywhere. We poison the soil and the water, and our garbage covers the floors of the ocean. And yes, every year, we kill over 100 billion animals to feed our carnivorous appetites. Our industrial era mindsets of growth at any cost has become a recipe for self-destruction. 
And we have known that markets cannot succeed in failing societies. Now we, mu we must learn that healthy societies and markets depend on the health of the natural environment. Alam nyo po, I would rather choose sustainability rather than progress. A progress that destroys our only home. That is why going back to business as usual would be short-sighted and self-destructive. Green and inclusive growth is no longer a nice thing to have. It is the only way to prevent the next crisis, which according to scientists could well turn out to have an even greater destructive impact than COVID-19. Ito po yung first life implication. The second one is, alam na nating lahat to, no? Prevention is better than cure, no? And the importance of science. The pandemic is a strong reminder that ignoring science carries steep costs. Scientists have long warned about infectious diseases, especially since the recent outbreaks of Ebola, SARS, and the bird flu. In our era of deliberate misinformation, fake social news, and divisive political propaganda, we now have an opportunity to rediscover science, data, as a reliable arbitrator and a guide to make informed decision making. Ayan po, no? Kaya makinig tayo sa science, eh, kumisang kasi sa dami-dami ng fake news, hindi na natin alam kung ano yung ipopost natin. No? Eh kung minsan nga, nagiging agent pa tayo nung tinatawag na pagpo-post nung sinasabing mga hindi totoong informasyon. No? Think before you click, sabi nga nila. No? The third implication is a threat like this, no? The COVID-19 pandemic needs collaboration and cooperation. No? Former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan referred to climate change, diseases like this, no? and terrorism as problems without passports no? that cannot be stopped at the border and that can only be tackled if we cooperate. A virus cannot be stopped at borders and does not respect national sovereignty and even race, creed, or gender. Walang sinisino. Kaya nga pantay-pantay tayong lahat. At hindi nito kailangan ng visa or passport. No? Over time, nature will force our hands. Whether we are prepared or not, the idea of a common enemy may sound outlandish to many at this point, but COVID-19 demonstrates the conventional power concepts are no longer useful when dealing with global threats. The notion of global stewardship and the imperative to build stronger collaborative bonds across the nation and between nations will ultimately become a necessity or even among agencies. Communication is vital. No? Even among agencies. Kasi kung hindi natin gagawin ito, eh, tayo rin ang maapektuhan. Eh, example, siguro yung CHED at saka yung DepEd. At least mayroong communication. No? Yan yung dapat nating ano, makita ngayon na dinudulo nito. So we need collaboration and cooperation. The next implication is the role of the private sector and educational institution is essential and at the same time critical. While coping with the pandemic in a struggle to survive, many well-managed companies have put health, you know, put the health and safety of their workers first while cooperating and working with the government. You know? clients and customer, and along supply chains. No? Example, 
companies have retooled their manufacturing capacities to supply medical supplies and have mobilized community-based efforts to cope with the pandemic. Dito sa Pilipinas, kitang-kita naman natin at feel na feel natin yung ano, importansya ng mga private sector. Ang dami nilang naitulong at nagpapasalamat po kami sa inyo. Educational institutions are providing government with data to help them arrive in making sound decision. Ayan, like for example, yung UP, no? yung Lasal, limpa, yung Ateneo, kami po sa SVD, meron kami tinatawag na Kalinga. No? Or mismo tayo dito ngayon, no? sa CHED. No? And in particular, sasabihin ko, CHED Region 1. No? Congratulations po sa inyo kasi parang feeling ko kayo pa yung kauna-unahang gumagawa nitong mga gantong klaseng mga activities, no? So palakpakan po natin yung CHED Region 1, no? So Re CHED Region 1 is helping us to cope up by providing this webinar, web webinar for example, no? Ang gaganda ng topic last week, no? Ngayon, merong topic na ganito. Tapos come Thursday, meron na naman. So kudos po sa inyo. No, mga taga Ched Region 1. No? Saludo po kami sa inyo. Another implication is the importance of continuous learning even during challenging times. Sabi nga ni Mark Twain, no? do not let schooling interfere with your education. Brothers and sisters, sisters, Time is at our disposal to learn new things. No? Diba? Ang dami nating oras para magkaroon ng mga bagong kaalaman o kung hindi naman isbalikan yung dati nating alam. Example na lang din po is yung instead na natututo tayo ngayon, natututo rin tayong mag-reflect. No? So we try to reflect on what is happening and see the Catriona Gray. No? Ano yung Catriona Gray? The silver lining. No? So we have so much to learn from this pandemic, whether it is relational, personal, or even spiritual. No? At sabi rin Albert Einstein, education is what remains after one has forgotten what one has learned in school. At yung pang-anim po na implication is, huwag kayo mabibigla kasi... Bawal po ito sa school pag nag-aaral. Eh, narinig ko lang to kasi natatawa nga ako kasi iba yung kanyang term na ginapit. Siguro parang ayaw niyang mag maging masyadong technical. No? Uh, marami pong nagmamahal sa kanya ngayon. No? Kaya anon marinig ko yung sabi ko, hindi naman talaga yun yung technical term na gusto niya. Kasi ang sabi niya is, ano yun? Hindi masamang mangopya. No? Sabi niya. Hindi masamang mangopya. Sabi ko, okay na, gusto niya maintindihan siya ng masa, pero siguro sa mga nakakaintindi, alam, niya, alam nila kung ano yung ibig sabihin niya. No? Ano? He was talking about benchmark, benchmarking, no? at may bagong term na ngayon doon, no? kasi ang tawag na iba doon ay hindi na benchmarking. Ano na tawag na iba ngayon doon? Management visit. Na, yan. Yung sinasabing mga best practices. Kasi we can learn, ano? Example na lang, yun ang nangyayari sa atin ngayon dito sa pandemic. May maraming model no? para matugunan natin no? precisely yung COVID-19 pandemic. No? We can learn, for example, sa South Korea, no? yung ginawa sa Wuhan. No? Tingnan natin, i-benchmark natin yung ginawa sa Taiwan, sa Vietnam. O yung iba naman sa Europe, ano yung nangyari sa kanila nung bigla silang magbukas. No? So lahat yung pwede natin, ano, makopya. O kung hindi naman, kung hindi maganda at mali, eh di wag natin kopyahin. No? So, hindi masamang mangopya during this time of pandemic. Pero kailangan mo natin magtapos ng pag-aaral para ano, maisabuhay yung pangopya. Joke. So, now we go to the life lessons. No? The COVID-19 pandemic is upon us confronting us and neither military power nor wealth can stop the destructive global spread of COVID-19. Its full human impact and economic cost 
will not be known for months or even years to come. The virus is now spreading among the most vulnerable populations, among the so-called poorest of the poor. As the pandemic is unfolding, it is revealing human vulnerabilities, but also showcasing the most important things in life. For example, our relationship, no? our relationship to God, our relationship to others, and even, or maybe very important, is our relationship to ourselves. No? Yung tinatawag na introspection. Or if not, yung mga important things in life is yung areas of our life. Ano-ano yung physical, psychological, social, or spiritual. Indeed, the pandemic makes us ask the big essential questions. And we are hungry for the answers. Especially as we see the number of coronavirus cases and deaths rising daily. To date, more than a million people have been affected by this virus globally including hundreds of thousands of deaths. In many countries, schools and universities, malls, sports stadiums have been ordered shut. Major conferences, trade shows, and world tournaments, and many international fights or flights have been canceled. So we pray, we pray that this pandemic will come to an end soon and that governments and agencies will speedily find the tools to combat and eradicate it. But in the meantime, it would behoove us to also learn some life lessons that have emerged from this disease, directly or indirectly. And so, brothers and sisters, here are some life lessons. Parang a la Robert Fulgum, no? And the thing. Lesson one, no? Lesson one, one hatching can change the world scene. No? Meaning one sneeze, no? So one hatching can change the world scene. It boggles our minds. People with COVID-19 spread viral particles through coughing and sneezing that can instantly infect tens if not hundreds and thousands of people. The lesson is powerful. We each possess two forces within, a body and a soul. Ito yung famous na sinasabi ni Emil Dorkheim, no? the French sociologist, no? famously called man a homo duplex or a double man, referring to this idea. But if a small Particles from our body can produce such havoc in our world. Just imagine how much good our souls can create with its divine particles. If one's sneeze can affect our world so dramatically, one positive deed can certainly produce an even greater change. This stands as one of the most underestimated, underestimated truths of life. As the COVID-19 has proved, each of us holds the power to alter the state of our society. If we can allow our souls to produce some divine particles, not only those needs, through deeds of goodness and kindness, we too can then provoke and stimulate a positive revolution that can and will eventually change our, our world for the better. As a philosopher once put it, and I quote, each person must view himself and the entire world as being half meritorious and half guilty. If he or she does one single good deed, he or she can tip the scale and bring deliverance and salvation to the entire world. So one hot chain can change the world scene. The next lesson in life is a small amount of fear is good. A small amount of fear is good. Franklin Roosevelt 
famously exclaimed that there is nothing to fear but fear itself. In his first inauguration speech on March 4, he said this, 1933, there is nothing to fear but fear itself. Take, for example, the COVID-19 coronavirus. It is no secret that it has spread fear among individuals of all backgrounds and cultures and races. People are increasingly afraid to congregate, to travel, and attend public events, and even send their children to school. But the more we fear for what will be in the future, the more we can also learn to appreciate all that we have today at this very moment. Yun yung isang naidudulot ng maganda ng pagkatakot. Mas lalo nating na-appreciate kung ano yung meron tayo ngayon. No? Kung baga parang kumisan hindi na natin iniisip yung mangyayari. No? Kung hindi, nagiging importante sa atin dahil sa takot kung ano yung mas nangyayari sa atin sa ngayon. No? Turbulent times like this teach us in such harsh ways, ways that life is so vulnerable that seeming certainties are so uncertain and that material achievements are so fleeting. The fear that then naturally emerges from this realization can rattle us profoundly, but it can and it must always awaken us to a renewed appreciation and commitment to all that is firm and certain in our lives, such as deepening our relationships with our spouses, children, and friends rededicating ourselves to life or to rededicating ourselves to living a life of purpose and learning to recognize and be grateful for the infinite blessings that God bestows upon each day you know, for us. Perhaps this is why the wisest of man, King Solomon, taught that, and I quote, happy is the man who is always fearful. So meaning, a little bit of fear is very valuable for it prevents us from falling into a stalemate state and open our eyes to all the good treasures that lie within us and in front of us that we may have been too numb to notice it. So, have fear. No? Pero konti lang. No? Huwag niyong damihan. Lesson three, the unbreakable power of unity, but also learn how to be content and at ease alone. No? Meron nga tayong kasabihan, no? yung alam na alam natin itong kasabihan na ito. No? In union, no, sabi? in union there is strength. In Tagalog, sa sibuyas may tigas. World governments and international experts are collaborating in unprecedented ways to find a vaccine and possible cures for this coronavirus. Diba sabi ko kanina is yung pinakamabilis na na discover na vaccine is yung sa mums 14 years. Pero because of this nga of this of this unity, no? Vaccine may be discovered earlier, no? Because of this cooperation and we pray you know sabi nga nila pero matagal pa rin 12 to 18 months ang tanong nga doon is kailan tayo mapapadalhan dito sa Pilipinas kung saan sakaling ma-discover yun additionally the coronavirus has brought together media personnel from 91 organizations in 40 countries to disprove rumors and combat disinformation about the coronavirus epidemic or pandemic it is, in, it is in historic moments of unity such as this that we are privy to the power of collective responsibility. And when we come together as one, even the most destructive of disease become curable and even the cruelest of challenges are eventually surmountable. It is no secret that we live in tumultuous and divisive times our status as one nation under God is menaced by discords of all sorts. 
Yet, the coronavirus teaches us all that the health and success of our future rely on one essential, essential pillar. Ano po yun? Respecting each other for who we are. People of all kinds who were created in the image of God, we can certainly disagree, but we must not become disagreeable. We can battle ideas, but we cannot battle people. We can frame the content of our conversation, but we cannot frame the inherent dignity of our fellow human beings. And when we join hands together, a path of redemption is then fabe, like the colors of a rainbow or a symphony of instruments. True beauty and harmony will only emanate from our ability to unite and collaborate together. No? So this is a lesson, no? a life lesson, a very beautiful life lesson. The next lesson, lesson four is keeping good hygiene must apply to all areas. We should wash our hands whether there's a virus or not. No? With the rapid spread of the coronavirus, Health officials are constantly warning us to keep good hygiene by making sure to scrub our hands for at least 20 seconds, frequently singing happy birthday. Cover our noses and mouths when we cough and try to avoid contact with strangers. Tech experts are also cautioning us to clean our tech devices as often as we can as viruses can live on the surfaces of our screen for up to 96 hours or four days at room temperature. So, ingat po tayo. This has led many of us to undertake extra measures of protection from wearing masks to sanitizing our hands and faces compulsively. But the question is, are we as careful about physical infections as we are about spiritual ones? What if we were just as attentive about the spiritual viruses that we or others may spread, such as negative words and actions? It is no secret that we live in an age of impulsions and instant gratifications. In social media, we often do not hesitate to voice our immediate reaction to every, to every story under the sun, but not Every Facebook post is worthy of our likes, pokes, and comments. Not every tweet is worthy of our retweet. And not every Snapchat and text are worthy of our response. Kung minsan nga nakakainis magbasa ng Facebook o kahit ang mga group chat, kasi nga may mga, alam niyo yun, may mga dapat na hindi naman dapat i-post o i-like. No? Example na lang po, no? huwag magagalit. No? Yung... Kung minsan ito, inis na inis ako dito. Eh. Yung pagpapasurvey ng CHED, <laughs> sorry ha. Uh, yung, pag nagsasurvey yung CHED kasi, meron kaming uh, sariling group CHED eh, no? para sa kaalaman po ng lahat. Hindi na namin makita kung minsan yung survey. Sa so, dinami-dami nung post na naandun na hindi naman dapat i-post. Tapos yung Para saan ba yung dan, 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 Eh, nakikita naman ng mga taga-chid na dan na kayo, no? Yung mga ganun ba, no? Ito naman po yung ano, no? It's just being honest, no? Eh, kung misa nga, gusto kong para maiba naman, sasabihin ko, not dan, not dan, no? May ibang venue, no? Yung, kung baga parang siguro yung prudence na rin o yung respeto naman na... Ewan ko, paano basta, kung misan, hirap na hirap na kong hanapin, tapos i -re na lang ng mga taga-ched. No? Huwag naman po kayong magagalit, pero observation lang naman po yan. No? Kung makikita nyo po ngayon, baka nga mga nakangiti yung mga taga-ched region 1 ngayon sa sinasabi ko. Diba, taga-ched region 1? In the race to speak back, no, we continue, we often forget to, forget to think and the urge to reply, our swirl of emotion often eclipses our clarity of thought. 
and in the heat of these agreements, our minds often take the back seat, and spiritual viruses may be spreading themselves uncontrollably. In the wise words of the 18th century sage, and I quote, all that is taught should not be said. All that is said should not be written. All that is written should not be published. And all that is published should not be read. No? Or should not be read. No? Ito po yung fourth lesson. Lesson five. No? Being attuned to oneself is necessary, but also don't forget the others. No? Victor Frankel, the famed psychotherapist and best-selling author of Man's Search for Meaning, once spoke to his students about our responsibility to heed to life's calling, even when it clashes with our life plans. No? Do not ask what you want from life, he said. Instead, ask what life wants from you, and then you will live happy lives. I think Frankel was right. True happiness can only be achieved when we learn to accept what life wants from us, even when it interferes with our own plans. This is a good time to be attuned to ourselves, to reevaluate what are the reasons for all this and how should I make a difference. Another is, let me share with you this wisdom from Japan. No? It is the Japanese concept yung tinatawag natin our reason for being called ikigai. Hindi ko alam kung anong uh, tamang pronunciation, ikigai or ikigai. No? This is Japanese concept meaning a reason for being. In ikigai, one can see a convergence no? of four primary elements. Ano ano yun? Passion, Mission, profession, vocation. No? Ano ba yung passion para dito sa ikigai? No? Your passion is what you love and what you are good at. Your mission is what you love and what the world needs. Your vocation is what the world needs and what you can be paid for. And your profession is what you are good at, and what you can be paid for. So, do you want to find your ikigai? Ask yourself the following four questions. What do I love? What am I good at? What can I be paid for now? Or something that could transform into my future hassle? What does the world need? So, brothers and sisters, we have a purpose. We are not here in this world because of accident. This is a big statement. Tandaan niyo po to. Creation will never be the same without you. May purpose po tayo. Creation will never be the same without you. Hopefully, ano, pakitignan niyo po itong ikigay. May magandang lesson po na sinasabi to. Alin ba talaga yung gusto natin dyan? Alin ba yung priority natin dyan? Lesson six. The internet should be a basic right. Alam niyo po, para sa akin, ano, logic dictates, no? logic dictates me that if education is a basic right. And so, today, more than ever, internet as a mean, medium, or tool in the delivery of learning, then it should be our right to have an access on it. Kasi kung hindi ito magiging right, anong silbi ng ating edukasyon, especially sa ganitong panahon? No? E sinasabi natin, basic right yung ano, education. E kung ito'y magiging paraan para ma-educate tayo ngayon, no? at least naman, ano, maging right siya. Kaya nga kung titinan nyo, may question din, ano, if you adhere to this or not. No? 
But accompanying that right no, about this internet thing no, is also the responsibility of how to use it. And then ethics and morality is not far from following it. Kasunod niyan po ay yung question ng ethics at saka ng morals. Kasi sa ngayon, meron ng magkakaroon na tayo ng mga tinatawag na bagong term. No? Ano ba yung responsibility natin dito? Ano, ano ba yung ethical dilemma na meron tayo ngayon dito? Yung regarding digital citi citizenship. No? Yan yung mga term na yun. Virtual reality. No? Yung tinatawag natin artificial intelligence. No? Eh, ito po yung mga bagay na dapat natin i-consider din. No? Maaaring right tong internet, pero meron din po siyang kaakibat na ano yun? responsibilidad. Lesson 7. No? Ito, ganda. Lesson 7, everyone should know how to cook. No? Diba, meron tayong lesson din na nalaman ngayon. Ano yun? Hindi talaga pansit ang pampahaba ng buhay, no? kundi sardinas. No? Eh, maswerte kami dito sa community namin, puro kami lalaki. No? Marurunong kami magluto. No? Meron kami dalawang kasama dito na working student. Pareho marunong magluto. Tapos ako rin mismo, eh, pakialam meron ako sa pagluluto. No? Kaya nakikita naman po sa katawan na no? Yeah. Diba? Everyone should know how to cook. O kung di naman is, pati pagpiprepare, ano? Magkakaroon kayo ng mga gourmet-gourmet na ganyan, no? may, may mga beautiful presentation, ano? That will bring out the creativity in us, ano? ano? Yung pagluluto. So, lesson seven, everyone should know how to cook. Lesson eight. It is unthinkable to go back to normal. No? If destroying our environment is our former normal, so please do not return to that normal. In our school today, there will be a new normal. Sabi nga, hindi na pwedeng magkamay, hindi na rin pwedeng maghag. No? Siguro ngayon is ano, kindata na lang. No? So, mahirap. Mahirap isipin na babalik pa tayo sa new normal. Babaguhin talaga nitong COVID-19 yung ating normal. Siguro to the point na wala pang vaccine, no? Malay natin ano, baka we go beyond this. Kumisa nga iniisip ko, sabi ko, hindi kaya pati pagbubuntis ano, ay magkaroon na ng new normal. Baka in the future yung pagbubuntis ibubulutot na lang, no? <laughs> Sabi na asang pablutot be. Na? So, mahirap, no? Pero even though there is this unthinkable no, uh, idea of going back to that normal, ang kailangan lang natin siguro dito is be positive. No? Because, again, the world is healing. No? At saka kung minsan nakikita natin ano yung magiging importante na dapat natin gawin na hindi na dapat natin gawin, no? Yung po yung maganda natin tignan. Lesson 9. No? Alam nyo po, before COVID-19, there was Kobe 24. No? So lesson 9 is, be in touch, no? be connected. Ang daming mga gandang lesson na binigay ni Kobe sa bigla niyang, bigla niyang pagkamatay. Imagine, uh, mga 7-foot seven, seven guy umiiyak. Ang lalaki. Pero uh, yung ilong, umi, pati ilong umiiyak. No? Talagang kitang-kita mo na yung untimely death. No? Kahit ako, no, very much affected ako nito nung Kasi nga, malayo din ako sa pamilya ko. No? Cherish those you love and hug them now. No? So another is, we cannot afford to take things for granted anymore. Especially our spouses and our families and friends. We who are married so often take each other for granted. No? Ano pa yung 
whatever good we can do for each other as a couple and for each other as friends and family, let us do it now and not wait for one day as that one day may never come. Ito po ay galing sa mga, ano, no? mga taong malalaki itong nakalagay dito sa screen na yan. Yung isa nga, no, nung mabalitaan niyang namatay si Kobe, anong una niyang ginawa, immediately tinawagan niya yung kanyang pamilya to say, I love you. No? Kasi very much connected dito yung lesson 10. No? Ano yan? Death is real. No? The reality of death. Alam nyo po dito sa mundo, there are two things that we cannot escape from this world. Number one, paying taxes. And number two, death. No? Yung po yung dalawang hindi natin pwedeng takasan sa mundong ito. At ang masakit pa dito sa death na to, it is very difficult to die, to die now no? in this pandemic situation. Imagine, umamatay ka mag-isa, ni hindi ka pwedeng paglamayan o iburol man lang, susunugin ka agad, yung pamilya mo na hindi man lang magkaroon ng time for mourning, no? talagang alam na alam mo, daman-daman mo, na ang hirap ng sitwasyon kung ngayon ka mamamatay. No? So, death is real. Pero ang isa lang tanong dito is, Kung sakasakaling mamamatay kayo, ay hindi pala tayo, no? kung sakasakaling mamamatay tayo, ano kaya ang magiging response sa atin no? pag namatay tayo? No? Alam nyo po, siguro pwedeng magkaroon ng tatlong response no? kung sakasakaling mamamatay tayo. Yung unang response siguro is, pagtingin sa yung ganyan doon sa kabaong, sasabihin sa'yo is, <laughs> buti nga sa'yo. Bad ka kasi, no? salbahe ka, yan. matay ka, buti nga sa'yo. Pangalawang reaction is, pagtingin sa'yo yung ganyan, ang sasabihin nung tumingin is, who you? No. No. Ibig sabihin, wala kang ginawa. Wala kang ginawang maganda, wala ka rin ginawang mabuti. Parang, wala lang. No. So, who you ka? No. At yung pangatlong response, kung sakasakaling mamamatay tayo is, yung panghihinayang. Na pagtingin nang sa'yo yung ganyan, Ang bait pa naman ito. Bakit namatay? No? Mayroong pangihinayang. So, ang tanong na, saan kaya tayo doon sa tatlo na yun? Ano? Hopefully, lahat tayo is ano, nangihinayang o may panghihinayang. No? So, brothers and sisters, death is real. Pero hindi doon natatapos. No? Death is real and so as eternal life. No? Tandaan natin yun. Death is real and so is eternal life. Alam nyo po ba yung mga benedicting monk, yung sinasabi natin mga trapis, no? meron po sila yung tinatawag na practice of greeting. No? Pwede ba dito sa virtual reality natin ngayon, ano? wari mga monk tayo, ano? wari mga monk tayo, tapos i-greet natin yung isa. Kasi sa buong taon, Itong mga monk na to, pag nagkakasalubungan sila, kasi they, they are practicing yung tinatawag na ora et labora, no? yung prayer and work. Pag nagkakasalubungan sila, they will usually greet each other ng memento mori. No? Pwede bang sabihin natin, ano, kahit sino yung nandyan, ano, sabihin nga natin, memento mori. No? Memento mori. Ano ibig sabihin ng memento mori? Iyon yung greeting nila, pag nakasalubong nila, memento mori, ang ibig sabihin nun is, Remember, you will die. No? Mamamatay ka rin. No? Yun yung great greeting ng mga mong. No? But, during Easter, yung memento mori na greeting, nagbabago. Pag nagkasalubungan yung mga mong during Easter, ang greeting nila is, memento vivere. No? So, pwede ba nating i-greet ulit yung bawat isa? na Memento vivere. Ang ibig sabihin ng memento vivere is remember that you will live and you will live forever. No? No? Tandaan natin yun. No? Death is real and so is eternal life. No? So these are the 10 lessons that I would like to share with you. 
Now the next topic is about my personal journey this in this COVID-19 pandemic. No? Uh, it is personal and at the same time spiritual. No? So ito po yung aking ano, no, life lesson personally. So at first glance, this pandemic was, tra was a tragedy. But it is also a chance for humanity to examine what is essential. The pursuit of consumerism and an obsession with productivity have led us to deny the value of life itself, that of plants, that of animals, and that of a great number of human beings. When we encounter stressful times in life, it is important we take care of our spiritual well-being the same way we attend to our physical health. A spiritual health is a vital ingredient in maintaining a happy, healthy, energized, and vibrant life. With so many economic challenges and negative fear-based media coverage, it is imperative to take some quality time for yourself and ensure that you are giving yourself the care your body, mind, and soul require. Most of us are unaware of the health of our spirit, of our life energy. We go about our daily business without ever giving a second thought to this very vital part of our lives. For the majority of our people, spiritual health is intangible, invisible. The notion of the spirit is purely an idea or abstract concept, not a thing that can be monitored and measured easily like blood pressure or insulin levels. Yet our spiritual health is just as real and important as any other measurement of our well-being. Lacking the modern devices and technology used to track physical illness, we must rely upon a routine of self-examination and introspection in order to gauge the health level of our spiritual selves. So now, my personal anecdote. Alam niyo po, prior to the quarantine period, <laughs> umaaten pa po kami ng seminar sa Manila. At Yung lugar pa na inaattendan namin ay nasa pagitan nung kung saan may positive no sa sa Pasig. Meron doon sa Green Hills at meron na rin sa Tagig. Ay ang lapit-lapit. Ang nangyari, dahil natatakot kami na makulong sa Manila, umuwi kami. Hindi na namin tinapos yung seminar, no. And then the quarantine period started middle of March, no? So there were meetings in the school, no. Personal and community preparations are also being attended to. No, bili ng ganito, bili ng ganito. Ano yung wala, no? Yun yung mga ginagawa namin. And then, my initial reaction, and at the same time, our kanchawan, no? Sabi namin na nag-uusap kami, ah, patay ang mga extrovert dito. No? Patay ang mga extrovert, no? Eh, ako, introvert ako, no? So, okay lang ako, sabi ko. And at the same time, sabi ko, Trained din ako sa seminary, kaya walang problema sa akin tong quarantine na to, no? And so, during the quarantine, we have new routines. Kami na ang nagluluto, at syempre, kami na rin yung kumakain. At yung nagiging trabaho ko dito, every week, kasama ko yung dalawa namin kasama, dinidisinfect namin yung the whole divine, no? Dito sa vegan, talagang namili kami ng pangbombang ganyan, dinidisinfect nila yung whole ng... Uh, ano campus nitong school namin no yun yun 3 weeks na ganoon ang ginagawa namin then comes the negative reality news news more news eh nangyayari naman sa akin i am feeding myself with those news talagang sa umaga pa lang news na pagpasok sa kwarto news na kumisan paghawak ng cellphone news pa rin no Tapos, dumagdag pa dito yung situation ng school na mawawala ng pasok. Papano naman yung mga teachers. No? Ayun. Kaya nga, yung isang ang, ano yun? Yung survey ng CHED, no? Mayroon tanong doon na nakalagay. Three major concerns, no? Nakalagay doon. Three major concerns. Ay ako yung sumagot. I answered, salary, salary, salary. No? Pati yung pagsagot ko doon sa survey, naapektuhan. And then, eto na nga, no, because of the news, and then, yung iba pang nababalitaan mo, yung nangyayari doon sa mga namamatay, there is this so-called reality of death. No? Yung mamamatay ka, 
o mamamatay ako na malayo ako sa pamilya, no? Ayun. Naapekto na pala ako noon. And kumisan, sorry to say, naapekto din ako ng government response, no? Yung hinihingi natin, ano? Silently na magkaroon ng mass testing, contact tracing, na sana mayroong quarantine place na specific para sa talaga sa mga PUI at PUM. Naapekto na ako noon. So, meaning all these things were taking toll of me. Naapektuhan na pala ako. At ang nangyari, tumataas yung blood pressure ko. <laughs> Pati yung sugar ko. Nag-400 pa nga yung sugar ko. Yung blood pressure ko is naging ano, 170 over 112. No? Tapos nagiging baliktad yung mundo ko. Hanggang sa ngayon, no? sa gabi ako gising, sa umaga ako tulog. No? So naapektuhan ako. So I was affected. No? May time na nagiging bugnutin ako, no? madaling magalit. No? At kumisan, pag nagsishare kami ng mga paring kasama ko dito, sabi ko, o sabi nila rin, ano, <laughs> hindi COVID ang papatay sa atin dito, high blood. No? And then, for almost, no, or more than one week, ganun na nangyayari sa akin. No? Walang bumababa. No? Tusok-tusok na yung mga kamay ko, no? saka check ng blood sugar. At may point din na, I doubted God, no? Talagang pinagdudahan ko siya, Lord, ito ba talaga yung kailangan mong gawin para sa amin, para matuto? And then, yung image ni Pope Francis, that is a powerful image for me of Pope Francis being alone during those orbi et orbi. No? Yung iisa-isa niya, and then very frail siya. And then, He was talking about this ano, uh, apostles in the boat. No? So, yun, no? talagang apektado ako. Pero sabi ko rin sa sarili ko, ayoko magpatuloy ng ganito. So, what I did, I consulted a doctor. So, tinawagan ko yung doctor, sinabi niya, Father, pumunta ka dito. So, I went to the hospital and then akala ko check up lang. Ang sabi niya sa akin, Father, dito ka na matulog. Ano? I-confine kita para sa mga check uh, mga gagawing test sa iyo. So, sige po. So, pumunta ako doon sa hospital. At nung mag-check in ako doon, iisa-isa ko lang. Wala akong kasama nung pumunta ako. Hindi alam nung nandun sa counter na hindi ko alam, hindi ako mahilig magsabi na pare ako. Ano? Maya, maya may tumawag sa kanya. At tingin ko ako yung hinahanap. Sabi niya sa akin, no? ay, Pari po pala kayo? Sabi nga sa akin. Pari po pala kayo? Sabi niya. Ito yung pagkakasabi niya kasi kitang-kita mo doon sa mouth niya. No? Ha? Pader pala kayo? No? Pader pala kayo? Eh, na, parati ko na-experience na ano yung no? Pader pala kayo? No? And so, when I was alone in that room, in the hospital, bumabalik sa akin yung ganitong klaseng stories, no? So when I was alone in the hospital room, no? Yung bang nakakatuwaan ko na lang isipin yung mga no? nagiging stone na yata talaga ano no. Kaya ano, father pala kayo. No? Tapos I remember yung mga kwento na example, isang beses no. Mayroong madre na sumundo sa akin para magmisa. Siguro alam niyo yung joke ni Father Jerry Orbos nung pinuntahan niya ako. Dahil sila nga yung sumundo, sabi niya sa akin, are you depressed? Sabi niya gano'n sa akin. Ano? No? May, pero ang gusto niya sabihin, are you the priest? No? Eh, sinagot ko siya, sabi ko, are you disaster? No? No? So, nung papunta na kami doon sa konvento nila, disaster nga, kasi hindi niya ako kinakausap, parang nagtampo siya doon sa sinabi ko. Ano? Pero sinabihin niya ako eh, are you depressed? Hindi sabi ko rin sa kanya, are you disaster? No? <laughs> so, iyan yung isa. Another is, eto, natatawa ako dito. Nung nakasign ako sa Baguio, may mga kilala ko dating mga kaibigan ko o mga estudyante doon sa mga former assignment ko. Uh, kung misa nagtitext, sabi niya, Father, parang ayoko nang, ano, ayoko nang mag-aral kasi hir- nahihirapan na akong makisama. Sabi niya, bakit? Kumisan kasi father, 
Ang hirap pakisamahan ni Auntie. Sa text to ah, tinitext niya ako. Kasi ang hirap pakisamahan ni Auntie. Tapos, dadagdag pa si uncle. No? Yung text nila, yan, ganyan. No? Yung auntie nila, nagiging antay. No? Tapos uncle, sabi niya, auntie. Tapos yung isa, ang baba naman pala ng pagtingin sa akin ito, uncle. No? Kaya father, ayaw ko na talagang mag-aral. Gusto ko nang bumalik sa probinsya. Kasi ang hirap nilang pakisamaan ni auntie at saka ni uncle. Yan, ganyan po yung text. No? No? Marami, no? Tapos, meron din ako experience na nung naka-assign ako sa Kalinga, usually pag nagta-travel ako, alam nyo yun, yung, dahil nga malayo yung Manila to Kalinga o Kalinga to Manila, pag nagta-travel ako, naka-chineras lang ako, at saka naka-short, parang uh, at least makatulog ako sa biyahe kasi matagal yung biyahe. And then ang gustong gusto ko doon kuminsan, yung nakikipag-agawa ng upuan <laughs> kasi hindi nila alam na pare ako. So, ang nangyayari doon, nakikipagtulakan din ako, enjoy ako doon kasi nga, kasi pag nalaman nilang pare, medyo, syempre may respeto rin, no? So, agawa na agawa na ganyan. Eh, nung nandun ako sa bus, nakikipag-agawa na ako ng upuan, meron pala nakakakita sa akin, sabi niya, Uy, father, dito ka na, dito ka na. Tapos yung isang kadumugan ko na, sabi niya, ay, pare pala kayo. <laughs> Akala ko tao, no? So, ayun na, no? Am I becoming a stone? Sabi ko sa nangyayari sa akin kasi nga, bugnutin, wala nangyayari, depressed, you know, very anxious ko ano yung nangyayari ngayong COVID, no? But prior to this, no, yung sa doktor, nasabihan ako ng doktor, sabi niya, alam mo, prior to the result, sabi kasi sa akin ng doktor is, Father, anxiety lang yan, no? Sa totoo lang, yun yung dahilan yan. Yung ano, lumabas yung result, Nakita nga na ang mataas lang talaga yung sugar at lahat normal. Kumisan kasi, iyan yung nangyayari sa atin pag may mga ganitong mga problema or pandemic. No? Ito, isa pa to, no? May isang ano sa akin, estudyante, sabi niya, Father, gusto kong may mga kausap na pwedeng mag-advise sa akin. Ano? Sabi niya, Apo, nung nirefer ko siya doon sa sister, sabi niya, Apo na, nakipag-usap na po ako sa sister. Sabi niya gano'n. Sabi ko, sinong sister? No? Tapos sabi niya sa text na naman, Apo, yung ano po yung nan? Yan, ganyan yung kanyang spelling. Ano? Ano? Yung madre, yung nan? No? <laughs> yeah. Sabi ko. Alam niyo yung mga ganitong klaseng mga sitwasyon, kumisan may sinasabi sa atin to. Eh, no? Yung mga text na ganyan, yung pagkakapronounce ng pader pala kayo. No? So, There are lessons to be learned. Ano-ano yun, ano? Example, challenging times can make or break us. No? We can become a better person or a better person because of these challenges. No? Another is, it is not about success that matters, but faithfulness. No? Next is, pagdaanan lang natin itong mga ganitong bagay, huwag natin tambayan. Okay? Sabi nga doon sa isang text na na-receive ko, kung may pinagdadaanan kang problema, no, daanan mo lang. Huwag mong tambayan. No? Stop worrying about things beyond your control. Continue finding things to be thankful for each day. And then start recognizing God's sovereignty and full control over everything. Nung ma-realize ko to, ang una ko agad sinabi kay Lord, Lord, thank you and sorry. No? Sabi ko, Lord, sorry. Pero may pero pa din ako. Lord, sorry. Pero tapusin mo na please. No? Sabi ko sa kanya, sorry. No? Another points na nakita ko ngayon sa experience ko dito is yung five main points nakita ko rin to, no? to maintain or to boost our spiritual health. Ano-ano yun? Yung una is, Prayer should be like a vitamin, no? not a medicine. So be consistent. No? Number two, prayer should be like a regular checkup, not an emergency checkup. So pray not only when you have problems, but in every circumstances of life, pray always. Ano pa yon? Be a prayer donor instead of a 
prayer recipient. Pray for others before praying for your personal needs. Yan, mga natutunan ko yan. Pang-apat, hindi lang naman yung COVID virus yung contagious. No? Love is contagious too. Spread it. No? Brothers and sisters, tandaan ninyo, no? Mahal na mahal tayo. No? Nino? Mahal na mahal tayo ni Natoy. Hindi, no? Mahal na mahal tayo ng Diyos. Ha? Tandaan niya. Hindi lang si Natoy ang nagmamahal. No? Lalong-lalo ng Diyos. Another lesson that we can learn from this COVID is ito. Nangyari sa akin ito. Binasa ko talaga ito because of this COVID, no? Be inspired by the story of others. I would like to share with you, please read the book of Job no? found in the Old Testament of the Bible. No? Yan po yung five main points ko in maintaining or boosting my spiritual health. No? At yung panghuli po, ito, no? nakita ko to sa libro, no? finding strength in tough times. Ano-ano yun? Instead of trying to avoid suffering, seek to learn and grow through it. Follow your faith, not your feelings. Instead of asking why, ask how. Identify the possible sources of the hardship you are currently experiencing. And then, follow God's will. Ask the right questions so you can make the right choices. Another strength is spend time with God often through prayer and spiritual reading. And then receive the peace that Jesus offers you each day. Gaano man po kasama yung sitwasyon natin, no? Jesus is always offering His peace to us. No? Tandaan po natin yan. Hindi nakakalimot ang Diyos. No? And finally, I would like to end this with this conclusion. In his new YouTube video, Rabbi Friedman, an Orthodox rabbi, addresses a big question. Why would God allow humanity to suffer the effects of a pandemic? Coming from a place of faith, he explains... Nothing happens unless it is for divine purpose and reason. It is divinely orchestrated for our benefit. You do not have to believe in a God that orchestrates what happens in our life or the world to understand that humanity and earth will be better after this pandemic ends. Most spiritual thought leaders agree on this fact. Just pay attention to the good news. People are joining together to sew masks. Companies are putting in extra time, money, and effort to make ventilators. Grocery stores are following the elderly to shop at special times or to order home deliveries. The air is cleaner in China. The cross in Bataan is clearly seen in Manila. And people are singing with each other during this quarantine, connecting more than now even before, even in isolation. These changes demonstrate the benefits to which spiritual thought leaders allude to. But we still have choice. We are being asked to rise up to fight a global threat and humanity is pulling together. Yes, people have suffered and it looks like many continue to suffer for the unforeseeable future. But each of us can only choose not to suffer. At this moment, we each one of us, we each one of us have enormous choices to make and choices shape our destiny individually or collectively. So what will you choose? Suffering or peace? Sadness, fear and negativity or joy, hope and positivity? Will you choose to love or hate? Accept or resist? Help or hinder? Our choices will affect us and the collective consciousness of the world. If this pandemic has been orchestrated by the Creator, then we are members of the orchestra. As such, 
we have to look at the instruments we play, how we will play them, and if we contribute, are we contributing noise or music? Will we co-create pain or pleasure, ugliness or beauty, fear or peace, hatred or love? Take responsibility for the choices you made in the past and the one you will make at this moment, ones that will change your present and future as well as the future of our society. Each of us has a choice to make. With our daily lives disrupted, we have the opportunity to develop new ways of showing up in the world. We can develop new habits and mindsets. Our patterns have been interrupted which allows us to make intentional choices about the habits we want to establish rather than following those we fell into unintentionally. Everything is changing. Every pattern knew or the world had and relied upon. Life as we knew it has ended, at least for now. That is why this moment provides an opportunity to answer additional big questions like, how do I want to live my life? Normally, our lives are overscheduled and so busy, and we have no time for what we know is important. Now we have the chance to be quiet and focus on our priorities and to re-examine all that we have previously held our normal. Post-pandemic, many people will have used the time to realignment, not only with themselves, and what matters to them, but with their faith. Crisis tests our faith, but it also strengthens it. They can move us farther away from God or closer to the Creator. When we are feeling stressed and frustrated and wounded by this world, we may step back and take a look at all God's creation. Get outside under the big sky and remind yourself who your God is. Then get into his word and learn more about God's love for you. Trust that if he can create and sustain the entire universe, surely God will take care of you. Brothers and sisters, we do not know what the future holds for us, but we know who holds the future. Maraming maraming salamat po. Yan, take two tayo. <laughs> thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you so much. Very inspiring, very enriching, very informative. Salamat po sa lahat ng lessons, sharing your personal experience, at lalong lalo na po yung mga jokes. Na iwan sa kanila. Father, uh, in a little while, we'll have the open forum. Mm -hmm. But uh, while you take a rest for a while, makakailangan mm -hmm. mo uminom ng tubig para hindi tumasang BP. <laughs> uh, we'd like to acknowledge our viewers. Ihinom we have 650 viewers now from our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. Thank you for attending this webinar series. Our reminders po, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, the CHED Regional Office One. And don't forget to like our Facebook, ch Facebook page, CHED Region One. Another reminder po, before we proceed with the open forum, please accomplish the feedback form for you to be able to have the online certificate. Uh, you would see on the screen the link for you to accomplish. Ganito daw. <laughs> Ayan po yung screen. Sa screen yung link na pwede yung fill out the form for the feedback. 
um, we have a deadline for this one up to 12 noon tomorrow so that we can all again prepare for the next session on Thursday. We have session three. Session three on Thursday would be on overview on dis distance learning education. So may dalawa po tayong speakers also scheduled for Thursday. So are we ready with the open forum? Questions? Yata yung maunang mag-question. Wala pa si Father. Are you in now? Are you back, Father? <laughs> Father, tubig lang. Huwag mo nang mag-snacks. <laughs> And then, nandito, nandito na po. Father, ako yata yung maunang question. Ano yan? Open forum. Sino si Natoy? Hindi ko rin po alam, nakikita ko lang yun eh. <laughs> Kailangan namin i-research father ah. Okay, ready with the first question? Sir Jones, ikaw ang sasagot. <laughs> This is from Bukidnon State University. Ay, yung layo ah. Oo nga father, ang dami ng ating mga participants. If this pandemic has been allegedly created, will we just faithfully accept the reality of death? What about the culprits that environmentally created this disaster? Ang asahin kasi kahit sino pang gumawa niyan, as long as mayroong permission siguro yung tinasabi nating Diyos, eh, iyon at yun pa rin ang mangyayari. Kasi ako ang tinitingnan ko rin dyan, una-una, ano ba yung naidudulot na maganda nito? No? Ang ano ko is, kahit gano'ng kasama yung sitwasyon, always look on the positive side. At saka sinasabi ko nga rin kanina, yung importance of science. Ano ba yung sinasabi ng science? Talaga bang, kasi napakalakas ngayon yung tinatawag ng mga, ano, ano tawag dito, yung mga... Sinasabing nanggaling sa lab, yung mga ganong pananaw. No? Para sa akin, galing man yan sa lab or kahit saan magaling yan. Ang tingnan natin dyan, ano yung sinasabi ng ganitong ano, uh, sitwasyon para mapabuti tayo. No? And world peace. No? I thank you. <laughs> world peace. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Father, let us always try to look at the positive side of everything. Mm -hmm. oh, Father, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Next, this is from Mam Rome de Assis of Metro Dagupan Colleges. Mm -hmm. It was mentioned that people who died of COVID-19 have to die alone. Mm -hmm. Can you share some spiritual tips? on how to comfort the grieving family? Hindi ko po alam eh, kasi hindi pa ako namamatay ngayong COVID. But... Hindi. Actually, sa totoo lang, para sa akin, walang pinagkaiba yung kamatayan nung walang COVID sa may COVID. Kasi iyon din yun. Ang mahirap lang dito talaga is yung naiwan. No? Kasi as a Filipino, may kultura tayo na mayroon yung tinatawag na yung dapat paglamayan, dapat makapag-grieve tayo. No? Yun yung sinasabi natin na sistema natin dito sa Pilipinas. Ang hirap kasi. No? Actually, kahit walang COVID, sa totoo lang, nar sa naranasan ko, kahit walang COVID, pag mayroong namatayan at hindi maganda yung pagkamatay, para sa akin, hindi mo kailangan magsalita. Ang kailangan mo lang manahimik at makinig. Ano? Ito yung tinatawag natin the importance of presence. Ano? Hindi sa lahat ng bagay na kukuha natin sa text or sa message, kumisang kailangan pa rin natin yung tinatawag na presensya. Presensya na kumisan wala kang sinasabi, pero naandoon ka at nakikiramay ka sa pamilya na yon na namatayan. Yung iba, Okay na sila doon. Okay. Thank you, Father. Oo, Father. Correct ka dyan. 
we really have to be uh, with the kung mga pagkakataong ganong para parati talaga tayo magkapareho na iniisip ma'am Angie kasi magka birthday tayo oo nga father <laughs> saka pa ng bubuking ha <laughs> hindi ko naman sasabihin yun Dave ah okay sige father another question from ma'am Althea Rivera does management visit undermine one's creativity or originality hindi rin kasi Ay, ang important father. Ang, father. hindi rin kasi ano yan eh kung nakita mo na yung best practice nila doon no? actually hindi lang naman para sa akin pala may, medyo may kulang ako doon sa slide na yun ang benchmarking or management visit is not uh, only about uh, best practices it is also about worst practices no na dapat, tingnan mo rin, ano ba yung mga worst na ginagawa nila na hindi ko dapat gawin? No. The important word is adaptation. I-adapt mo doon sa sistema ng institution ninyo. No? So, yung benchmarking or management visit is not about only best practices, no? but also worst practices and then try to avoid it. So we we learn from the mistakes of others. Apo, apo. Yes, Father. Next, another question from uh, Sir Abenes. Father Elmer, may I ask an advice for me or us to develop great spiritual health using multiple streams? Like? Um, parang hindi malinaw yung uh, pagkakaan. Uh, what particular multiple streams? Kaya? Ah, siguro itong pa-use ng social media. Ano po? Mm, pwede rin, Father. Hmm. Ito po, yung ginagawa natin ngayon. No? Magandang advice na po ito. Marami po dito sa mga nabanggit ko dito is galing sa social media. Kasi nasa inyo naman po kung ano yung i-visit nyo site eh. Na doon malalaman nyo rin kung paano nyo magagamit yung social media to boost your spiritual needs. Okay, Father. More questions? We, we have one more from Sir Jeff Coronu. As a priest, what is your comment or view <laughs> that COVID disease is a natural way of depopulating depopulating the earth to maintain balance? Huh? Uh, ano po? No comment? Kasi hindi ako sure eh. Kasi kung sinasabi nilang natural way of depopulating, eh hindi naman natural nga. Kung susundan ko lang yung kanyang logic, ano, uh, hindi naman natural yung pinanggalingan. So how come na yung pinanggalingan na hindi natural, yung sasabihin nga nating love, ay eh magkakaroon ng natural na depopulating where in fact hindi nga natural yung pinanggalingan, no? Yeah. Okay, Father. Do you have one? More questions? No more questions? Are we still have... Okay, and another reminder from the Chad Regional Office. Makulit po sila dito. <laughs> Actually, marami po mga taong behind the camera. Yung ating mga Chad Regional staff. Uh, kindly fill out the feedback form. At the given link, bit.ly slash ched session 2. Okay, deadline will be tomorrow at 12 noon. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. Para later they will email, will, um, they will email the certificates sa ating mga participants. Ma one more question. Yes, Father. 
pag uh, pwedeng after nito ano i-pray pa rin natin yung ano oracho imparata yes, father oh, sige before Or, we proceed with the words of gratitude at saka po yung ano na rin siguro gusto ko rin mag ano ng ble- final blessing yes father apo last question how can we Enhance our faith to be able to rest in peace. <laughs> How can we enhance our faith to be able to rest in peace? The <laughs> final resting peace, yan pa. <laughs> eh, siguro ano uh, kung saan ka mang church na kabilang ano ba yung sinasabi ng faith mo no for example as a catholic meron tayong base ng pananampalataya natin na ano tradition bible and the magisterium and then we learn from the saints no we learn from mary no Iyon, iyon yung mga ano man yung denomination mo, ano yung sinasabi ng mga tenets of faith mo. Sundin mo lang 'yon, no? Eh siguro, wag mo ring i-limit doon mismo sa faith mo lang yung inspiration kasi kahit naman sa ibang denomination or faith is mayroong inspiration ka pa rin na po pwedeng makukuha na pwede mo ring i-apply doon sa sarili mong pananampalataya, ano? And of course, we keep praying Mm-hmm. Yes, ito yung pinaka-key dyan. Pray. This is from uh, Dr. Basilio of Divine Word College of Lawag. Ah, pakitanong na lang po sa presidente nila. <laughs> Dr. Gladys, tanongin mo daw kay Father. <laughs> With the flexible learning modalities now, How best to boost students' spiritual needs, especially on the technical courses? Uh, again, ano, uh, pwede bang sagutin ko muna, ko muna yan ng ano, hindi about uh, spiritual, no? yung flexible learning modalities? Kasi kung titignan ko yung term na ginamit ngayon dyan, flexible learning modalities, Uh, hindi niya binanggit yung salitang online learning eh. Ibig sabihin, pwede kang gumamit ng ibang pamamaraan na hindi siya online-based or internet-based. That is why they called it flexible. Kasi siguro nakita rin nung mga namumuno sa atin na hindi talaga natin kakayanin directly sa internet yung pag-aaral. Actually, na-share ko isang beses to kay Ma'am Linette na tinanong niya kasi ako, Father, mag-online learning po ba kayo? No, sabi ko sabi ko hindi hindi namin gagamitin yung online learning kasi walang kakayahan lahat and then sabi ko kay Ma'am Linette you cannot equate no, you cannot equate connectivity to capability no no magkaiba yon no connectivity is different from capability akala lang kasi natin connected yung mga estudyante pero ang totoo lang ginagamit nila ay cellphone No? Ngayon, ang isang tanong doon is, especially sa ating mga administrator, papayagan nyo ba ang isang online learning class na ang ginagamit ng estudyante sa bahay para matuto ay ang kanyang cellphone? Kasi we, na, meron din kaming survey, informal survey, nagtatanong na kami sa mga estudyante na anong tawag dito? Ang tanong is, meron ba kayong laptop sa bahay? Meron ba kayong desktop sa bahay or at most mayroon ba kayong printer maraming nagsabi na anong tawag dito ang meron lang sila ay ano cellphone no ayun kung papayagan niyo bilang administrator na yung online learning natin is through cellphone go pero kami dito hindi so yung magiging flexible learning namin is gagamitin lang namin siguro yung uh, internet kung mayroong activity yung ipapagawa at kung may ipapasa yung mga estudyante. So, sa tanong na sa yung ngayon, sa flexible learning, 
ano ba yung pinaka specific mode of flexible learning ang gagamitin natin no para sabihin natin na makatulong din to in terms of spirituality no? example kami dito pwede naman natin gamitin yung facebook no sa flexible learning modality ngayon siguro namin dito sa divine is kung dati meron kaming community mass pwede namin ngayong gawin is ano ituloy namin yung class mass para makatugon doon sa social distancing. At ako, mas gusto ko nga, for example, na mas maliit na grupo ang minimisahan kaysa sa malaki. No? So, class mass. No? So, yun lang siguro yung example ko no, about this flexible. Because flexible learning does not mean internet connection. Okay, Father. Thank you, Father. More questions? That's the last question? Okay. So, there we have it. Father, uh, we can proceed with the prayer and the blessing. Ah, sige po. Pakisabi na lang po kalalinit na, no? E ano yung oracho imparata? Yung sinishare ko. Para sabay-sabay tayo lahat, no? Para ma-flash sa screen. Okay. Prayer for COVID-19. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in this trying time to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We apply to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. Saint Rock, pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. The Lord be with you with and with you. your spirit. And may Almighty God, the loving God, bless you and your loved ones in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So thank you po and stay safe. Thank you, Father. Thank you so much, Father. Marami pong salamat. Hmm. A round of applause to Father Elmer Loreto. We move on. We now listen to the words of gratitude from our Chief Administrative Officer, Ms. Nimha Gwenda. Thank you. Thank you very much, engineer. Thank you very much, engineer Angie Dolores, our anchor woman for today's session. Sabi niya, pipigain tayo ngayon ng ating group na nag-conceptualize ng uh, webinar series 2020 and uh, uh, I congratulate them they're very good uh, it was a very bright idea to have this webinar and uh, we are really delighted from Ched Region 1 dahil sinabi ni Father sana true lala we're the first to do this and other regions are also doing it sabi nga 
uh, as sabi nga ni Father kanina, um, maganda paminsan-minsan ang kumop mo. But not sa school. <laughs> There are examinations, especially sa board exam. That's a no-no. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, our valued partners in the academy and our other stakeholders for generously sharing your precious time to be with us, uh, your CHED R01 family in this webinar series 2020 of the Commission on Higher Education, Region 1. Your participation in today's session with the topic, Boosting Spiritual Health During Challenging Times, is truly inspiring. It is a very timely topic to deal with as we are all under the threat of COVID-19, which scared the whole world. Our special thanks to our well-chosen speaker, Father Elmer Loreto. Actually, he is not only the Vice President for Finance of the Divine Word College of Vegan, but he is indeed a retreat master. Well, <laughs> retreat master. I have noted several uh, lessons, uh, mostly yung mga... And, uh, which uh, he emphasized and discussed thro thoroughly in his um, presentation. One, I think there are 10 of these. And number one is one hatching for a review. <laughs> <laughs> one hatching can change the world uh, scene. Sabi niya, or one sneeze can change the world. Another is a small amount of fear is good or valuable. And the unbreakable power of unity uh, also learn how to be content at, uh, at ease alone. Sabi niya, in union, there is strength. In union, in fighting COVID, there is strength. Then keeping good hygiene um, must apply to all areas. We should wash our hands whether uh, there is a virus or none. So, yun ang another lesson. Na isa pa, na being attuned dito. Magpakita kayo dito sa... necessary but also don't forget others and the internet should be a basic right everyone should know how to cook at ang daming nag like nito father doon sa mga viewers natin maybe they learned really how to cook while under ECQ so And uh, it is unthinkable to go back to normal. Mahirap nga, but there's hope in the future with all the initiatives of our leaders, our health workers, we will certainly, and with the guidance of our Lord, we will certainly go back to normal. Be in touch, be connected. Ito, I personally, I personally felt it. Because of our busy uh, schedules and activities in the office and social responsibilities, talagang, I admit, sometimes, medyo na-detouch ako sa aking family. <laughs> But with the COVID, with the ECQ and GCQ, I felt that ang dami ko na palang naiwang responsibility Ang dami ko na palang naiwang obligasyon sa aking pamilya. Indeed, COVID taught me to be in touch and to be connected. And the last is, death is real and so is eternal life. And there are two things we cannot escape in the world. Payment of taxes <laughs> and death. Oo nga si BIR. Kahit uh, nasa COVID tayo, there's, third, uh, there, 
sending notice of non-payment of taxes. So, um, medyo, ano, but uh, at least there's an extent, but it's an obligation. Hindi mo maikipan in this world. There were also personal and spiritual learnings or lessons which our speaker has discussed and they are all worth treasuring. And uh, friends, uh, the evolution of COVID-19 posted us with great challenges. However, with the inspiration from our speaker today made us spiritually enhanced and gave us a strong will and determination to overcome trauma. Instilling a strong spiritual outlook helped us find meaning in life's difficult circumstances. I personally believe that spiritual people make healthier decisions. As such, always remember that God has a plan. Trust it, live it, and enjoy it. Friends, let's then let's then stay spiritually strong. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord is with us wherever we go. Friends, stay healthy and safe, and God bless us all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Nimfa. Thank you, Father Elmer. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pagtanggap ng aming invitation to be one of our speakers. Although kahit nung una, eh, parang nag-set up pa tayo ng mga <laughs> technology natin bago tayo umuo. Thank you, Father. I think, uh, magkakaroon pa tayo ng mga part 2 nito. Part 2 and part 3 and so on. Agree, Father? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ano yung second wave saka third wave? Oo, Father. <laughs> Magtatagal pa yung ating quarantine. We hope to see you in person also later. Pag wala quarantine. Again, thank you so much. Our round of applause to Father Elmer Loreto. Salamat din po. Thank you, Father. At this point in time, we'd like to thank also our 650 viewers from our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. Again, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Shed Regional Office 1. And don't forget to like our Facebook page, Shed Region 1. Reminders again, paulit-ulit po kami, the feedback forms. Please accomplish the link is uh, here, it's posted here, yung link. Please accomplish not later than 12 noon tomorrow to be able to avail your um, certificate. More reminders. Next schedule for Thursday, our session three would be on Overview on distance learning education. We have two speakers. The first topic is Overview on distance learning education and flipped classrooms by Dr. Fedro Sasueta, a professor from Florida. The second topic uh, on understanding the learners in an extraordinary time. The lecturer would be Dr. Norley Domenden. Uh, a psychologist. So we will be posting again the links at our Facebook page and YouTube channels. I'd like to acknowledge also the people behind the camera, the power couple, Lynette and Elvin Kasem. Yung camera, please. <laughs> Yan, dyan sila sa likod. Lynette and uh, Elvin, yan po. Of course, our Chief Administrative Officer is here with us, Ma'am Nympha Benio. Okay. And of course, ang ating multitasking man, 
a director, uh, kinuha, floor director, and so on. Kinuha na rin niya yung role ni Arnold, Dr. Mel Ancheta. With that, we'd like to thank you once again in behalf of our OIC director, Dr. Rogelio T. Galera, Jr., and all the members of the Chad Regional Office. Thank you for watching.